Welcome everyone to today's webinar, The Auditor's Guide to Bring Your Own Device. My name is Jim Kaplan and let me see if I can get this. Here we go. Okay. My name is Jim Kaplan and I am the president and founder of AuditNet. A little bit about myself, for those of you who don't know me, I work for Internal Audit for both Arlington and Fairfax County, and I was the Director of Internal Audit for Fairfax County Public Schools until 2005. I founded AuditNet in 1993 based on my concept of using the Internet as an audit tool. Here's a little bit of information about AuditNet, and you can read that. That was on the slides that I sent out to you this morning, so please take time to review that. That gives you some background on, on AuditNet. Let me cover some of the, uh, the housekeeping items for today. Uh, this webinar and its material are the property of AuditNet, and we will be sending you the recording link. Uh, I should have that out to you probably by, uh, by tomorrow. Uh, we are operating under NASBA rules, and NASBA rules require us to ask polling questions during the webinar, and CPE certificates will be sent via email to those who answer all the polling questions. The CPE certificates and link to the recording will send, be sent to the email address you registered with in GoToWebinar. You can ask questions during the webinar. Just submit your questions via the chat box on your screen and we'll answer them either during or at the conclusion of the webinar. After the webinar is over, over you'll have an opportunity to provide feedback. Please complete the feedback questionnaire to help us continuously improve our webinars. If GoToWebinar does stop working, you may need to close and restart. You can always dial in and listen along and follow along with the handout. Some disclaimers, uh, the views expressed by myself do not necessarily represent the views or opinions of AuditNet. Uh, any of the material that you see is for educational purposes only and does not constitute accounting or legal advice or create an accountant-client relationship. And we try to make sure that all the information that we present is accurate. So let's get into today's webinar. Uh, we will be talking about uh, bring your own device and mobile device management, two areas that uh, I feel are, are very important and something that we uh, recently uh, did a survey on. So we're going to discuss what BYOD and MDM is and we'll follow that by risk and audit considerations and then controls are important and we'll share a framework for auditing in this area. I'll also share with you the results of that survey that AuditNet conducted earlier this year and then connect you to some of the available resources. Many of the organizations now have opted to allow employees to procure their own devices, which will ultimately connect to enterprise data and resources. And this is really a, you know, it's a, it's a critical area for auditors to be involved in. And you're going to see from the results of the survey that uh, we found that there were some gaps and some areas that internal audit should be concentrating on. Uh, in addition, it, it's good to think uh, from your own terms what your organization allows for, uh, for BYOD. I'm sure that you all have varying opinions, but you need to think about that. Now, BYOD does come in different shades. BYOD stands for Bring Your Own Device. Uh, employees are allowed to use their, their own hardware and software. Uh, IT applications and company data are, are made available on the platform of the end user, that would be the, uh, the auditor or the, the individual who has that device. Now CYOD refers to choose your own device, and you'll find that there's a number of acronyms that, that apply to, uh, to BYOD. In this case, the employer still provides the hardware and the employee can choose uh, whatever model, whether it be an iPhone, an Android phone, a tablet device, so really there are some different options here. And then, of course, there's the what I call smuggle your own device, and th this means that people are using a, a second tablet, smartphone or tablet, uh, and they're also using the one that the company uh, provides, and they're using this smuggle device next to the one that's provided by the employer. So here's some of the, the different terms that, uh, that I was able to come up with. Bring your own device or bring your own disaster, whichever way you want to look at it. Uh, bring your own technology or bring your own tablet, BYOT. Bring your own phone, bring your own PC, etc. So these are all different, uh, different 
uh, terminology that, uh, that you will see for this. The one that I want to concentrate on is this one right here, mobile device management. And mobile device management means a range of products and services that enables the organization to deploy and support corporate applications to mobile devices. Excuse me one second. Sorry about that. Okay, so there are many different variations that you could use on BYOD within your organization. So you should think about what you're using, uh, what sort of policy you have within your own, your own company. So where do we start with BYOD? That's the question that, that I get asked most often. And of course, uh, you need to provide a starting point and, you know, basically the genie is out of the bottle right now, so it's not a case of, uh, Putting, putting that genie back in. You probably have uh, BYOD within your organization. There probably are uh, a number of employees that uh, are already bringing their own device in one way or another, so it really is time to uh, start taking a close look at this. Okay, the mobile device picture. We'll go over this fairly quickly. Uh, in 2014, the average number of connected devices per knowledge worker uh, was uh, estimated to reach an average of 3.3 devices, up from 2.8 in 2012. And, you know, this really has an impact on the organization. And, of course, by 2017, Gartner predicted that half of employers will require employees to supply their own devices for work purposes. Everybody's going out and getting the latest technology now, so it's not, uh, it's not surprising that uh, this prediction uh, will probably come true. And then, you know, think about how many mobile devices you have. Uh, basically, uh, if we could just see, I'll uh, take a, a little poll here. I'll look at uh, our attendees. You could just raise your hand if you have more than three devices. And you can just uh, indicate that by uh, raising your hand. And we've got Okay, there's, there's quite a few of you. There's probably about a third of you that have at least three devices. So that's really, uh, you know, really indicative of, uh, of where we are with uh, this, BYOD, uh, this BYOD topic. So here's some additional statistics that we have on BYOD. 67% uh, of people use personal devices at, at work regardless of the official BYOD policy. Uh, this one here, uh, BYO, bring your own, is pretty much uh, uh, within half of the companies that uh, this particular survey uh, found. 77% uh, of employees have not received any education about the risk related to BYOD, and this we'll see was substantiated by the survey that we did. Uh, education about BYOD is really not something that organizations are spending a great deal of time uh, great deal of time on. So you can read those statistics. These were in the handouts this morning and you can see where we're going on, on BYOD. So at this point I'd like to uh, uh, do a, a polling question and I will go ahead and, uh, and launch this first poll and that is the typical employee has how many mobile devices? So we'll go ahead and you could take a look at that uh, poll and just record your answer. Remember, if you're looking for NASBA CPE for today, you must, uh, you must answer the polling question. Okay, we've got about 88% that have voted. We'll go ahead and we'll leave this open for just uh, just another minute ago. We still have uh, people that are joining us, and I want to give them an opportunity to, to log in and, uh, and answer the polling question. We have a pretty good size audience today, so... Okay, we will go ahead and we will... Uh, Close the poll, 
and share the results. And it looks like about 42% have at least two, 42% uh, have more than two, and only 16% have, uh, have one. So it's pretty evident that uh, mobile devices and BYOD are, are something that uh, is taking place. So setting the stage here, uh, the Gartner Group predicted that bring your own device would be a top technology trend for 2013 with mobile devices surpassing PCs as the most common web access tool. And it appears that they were right. This coincides with something that we found last year in a survey in terms of how many people are using email. And it seems like uh, less people are using email and more people are using uh, their, their tablet devices and, and things like uh, Facebook. Sorry about that hate these pop-up messages. Okay, so this is just a statistic from the Gartner Group. Now some mobile device facts. Consumer fo focused technology is, is not a fad. The benefits far outweigh the cost. So this is something that, uh, that we're seeing. It's, it's here to stay. It's not going to go away. So consumer focused technology is on, uh, on the radar of uh, all employees, organizations, and it should be on audits radar as well. Uh, Researchers estimate that 159, almost 160 million smartphone users in the U.S. by the end of 2014. I'm sure we'll probably uh, we'll probably surpass that. Uh, there were some recent uh, studies that I saw that showed that uh, most people have at least uh, two devices, and based on the, the current population uh, of the U.S., I would say that uh, uh, we're far beyond that 159 million. Uh, worldwide sales of tablet stand users reached 195 million units in 2013, and I'm sure we're well over 200 million in 2014. And of course, Gartner says that mobile app stores will see annual downloads reach 102 billion. You know, most people are doing all of their shopping and uh, they're using their devices. And uh, I think the estimate was that uh, on the new smartphone or the new uh, iPhone, there's going to be over 105 apps that are preloaded on the phones. So that's pretty amazing. So BYOD could spell trouble for your organization. This survey was conducted by the Information Technology Intelligence Consulting and security trainer uh, nob4.com, and they found that half the respondents conceded that BYOD and corporate-owned devices may have been breached in the, the past 12 months. And that's pretty pretty amazing. And this is without their knowledge. And that, of course, is leaving data and applications vulnerable to both internal and external threats. And additionally, 34% uh, of the participants acknowledge they either have no way of knowing or do not require end users to, to inform them of security issues with employee-owned BYOD. Uh, these are pretty amazing statistics when you think about it. And of course, you can read that, uh, that survey. Uh, we've provided the link for that. And uh, you should be able to access that from the, uh, the PDF that we sent out this morning. So why is, why is this particular uh, issue so important? Well, obviously, the growth of mobile devices, mobile device use means increased risk for organizations. The increased risk for organizations means that audit needs to address it, and they need to address it now. Audit needs to add BYOD to the audit plan to address policy, controls, and risk. And this is something that uh, we'll cover in the, uh, the survey results. So here we, we launched a survey in April of 2014 on bring your own device control, risk, and audit. Uh, we had responses from over 339 uh, auditors from eight different organizational sectors. The organizations were ranging from less than 100 to over 10,000, with the median being between 1 and 5,000. The staff size was uh, from well, a single auditor to over 50, with the median being 11 to 25. So the in the middle of the road, we're talking about fairly good size audit departments. More than 70% of those that responded said that their companies or organizations did permit the use of mobile devices. So that's a pretty significant trend, and it falls into line with what we found with uh, the Gartner surveys as well as the other surveys that were out there uh, on, the, on the Internet. So basically, you know, we're talking about 
such rapid advance of technology and its application in business, and it's constantly evolving, and therefore it's forcing organizations to adapt before considering all the business risk and benefits. And that's, you know, when we talk about how many organizations have uh, adopted and allowed BYOD, I think that uh, this was a case of the, uh, uh, the cart before the horse, and, you know, it's a case of the risk associated with uh, the use of mobile devices computing uh, to an organization continues to grow and more employees are using mobile devices in their daily work activities. So uh, based on the survey, we found that close to three quarters indicated that their employer allowed employees to bring their own devices. Uh, of course, the primary service that uh, they were allowing them to use was email, which was pretty understandable. But you know, in terms of uh, what I said before, uh, email is not the only way that employees are communicating with uh, uh, with business associates as well as friends are using things like uh, uh, messaging and uh, uh, other other ways to uh, to connect with uh, with individuals. Close to 80% said that their employer provides company-owned mobile devices to employees. I'm not exactly sure, you know, how how this statistic. We have to take a closer look at this. Uh, but even within uh, the ones that said that they do uh, provide. Uh, company-owned mobile devices, 50% uh, said that they did not have a policy for mobile devices or BYOD, which is pretty surprising to me. More than half said that their employer had a, that said that their employer had a policy, indicated it was not well communicated to staff. And this goes back to the issue of education, that uh, basically uh, even those companies that have uh, BYOD uh, allow, allowable in the organization, they're not communicating the, uh, the policies that well. Almost two-thirds of those who said their employer had a policy felt it was not thorough or lacked the best practice elements. So here we, ha here we have policies, but the policies are definitely inadequate. Uh, more than half did require the employees to sign a written agreement, which is one of the best practices that we identified. And this should outline uh, the employee rights and obligations and the employer rights and obligations with respect to the devices and the code of conduct. And a lot of these have to go back to what the employee can do while they have the device, also what the employer has the right to look at on that device. And here we're talking about issues of privacy. So. You know, it depends if an employee is bringing their own device, which is not company-owned or company-sanctioned, does the employer have the right to look at that? The greatest concern of auditors, of course, was information confidentiality and following that data breach and misuse. And more than 80% of the auditors indicated that a risk evaluation covering mobile devices had not been performed, uh, a training or awareness pro uh, program covering BYOD risk of controls uh, has not, that should be, has not been conducted. Uh, they have not audited the area and they have not included this area in their future or current audit plans. So it definitely has not been on the radar or low on the radar of most internal auditors. So the conclusions that we came up with is that BYOD and mobile device management has not been a high priority for internal audit. The risk tolerance is high and the perceived threat seems to be low by the organizations. Uh, I'm not sure that that falls into line with uh, uh, the actual, uh, actual threat level on, uh, on uh, devices, on employees bringing their own devices. And the pace of the, uh, the adoption of bring your own devices clearly outpaced both senior management and the board of directors uh, vision. Uh, top top management is really not taking a closer look at this. They, uh, they don't see that this is a big issue. Uh, and I think middle management is more concerned about allowing employees the, the flexibility of bringing their own devices so they haven't thought about uh, all of the different policy and, and risk implications. Uh, Conclusion that we came to is internal audit should evaluate the controls and they should educate on uh, both on risk as well as uh, plan plan audits for this area. So these are the uh, the high level findings that we came came up with. 
Now, of course, you know, in, when you're talking about risk, these are SPI is the acronym that, uh, that we typically use, and that's Security, Privacy, and Incident Response. Uh, despite all the literature and information available on the risk associated with mobile devices and the expansion and explosion of BYOD, uh, you know, basically the survey that, uh, that we we ran showed that it was not a high priority for internal auditors. So you need to think about these kinds of risks. Malware uh, infection, uh, this could result in leakage, corruption, or unavailable, unavailability of data, uh, compromised uh, sensitive data, or data that uh, you might not want uh, uh, other individuals or companies to have uh, have access to. Of course, the negative publicity, this relates back to social media and more organizations are allowing employees to post on social media uh, and there's a lot of implications that uh, that could you know could impact the organization so these kinds of things also non-compliance with uh, with laws and regulations industry requirements uh, access controls and controls over device security. There are ways that you can control these mobile devices. Uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not a technology auditor, but you need to get together with your IT folks and basically talk about you know, what kind of controls you have over the devices and what they can access. And you know, we're talking about information that now is maybe uh, resident on, on your local network but it could also be up in the cloud. So these kinds of things need to be looked at very, very carefully. Uh, the ability to eliminate sensitive data upon termination or loss of the device. Of course, this goes into a management issue in terms of what happens to that device after the employee leaves employment. Uh, is there some way of turning off that device? Do you have a policy that they have to turn that device in? Can you shut it down uh, remotely? All of these things need to be looked at. Uh, management issues relating to supporting many different types of devices. This is the same thing that uh, organizations have dealt with in terms of personal computers, Mac versus PC, and uh, you know what uh, what types of software is installed. Uh, if you have many different, uh, if you allow many different uh, flavors within the organization, that puts a, a an increased strain on the IT department because they have to uh, they have to support the the devices that uh, that you have a policy for, so you really need to be clear in terms of you know what you're going to support and what is outside the realm of your uh, your sphere of influence. Uh, ensuring that employee-owned devices are properly backed up if they're using these devices for uh, uh, for saving data and, and uploading data or downloading data, uh, are there proper uh, backup plans in place? Additional slide on security concerns, uh, lack of physical security controls, uh, using untrusted mobile devices. These would be ones that employees are bringing into the organization that might not have the sanction of the organization. Uh, use of untrusted networks. Uh, there's always that, uh, that tendency for employees to just click on a link, and sometimes you could be uh, uh, subjecting your your networks and uh, your organization to uh, to malware attacks, to uh, uh, denial of service, DOS, uh, use of apps created by unknown parties. Everybody's got an app out there now, and it's very easy to download those apps. But sometimes you're downloading an app from somebody that you don't really know if that app is doing what it's supposed to be doing. Uh, also, how do your how do your mobile devices interact with your other systems within your organization uh, using untrusted content and then using location services. Location services allow uh, the employees to identify uh, their device based on their physical location. Uh, this is something that could uh, could be a security concern for the organization. So, you know, you need to know which devices are being used. You need to know what controls are in place. You need to know what networks are being accessed from these mobile devices, and how are these uh, how are these devices bridging your existing systems? So these are all things that you really want to uh, pay attention to. This is a great slide 
that has the NIST characteristics along with the illustrative risk, and these are risk associated with mobile devices. NIST does some great work in this area. The information is, uh, you know, is, is available on the NIST website. So, you know, this is something that you want to take a look at. Uh, and uh, you've got, you know, basically small form factor, loss of theft or data, uh, wireless network in interface for internet access, exposure to untrusted and unsecured networks. These are things that, uh, you know, we've talked about. Apps available through multiple methods uh, could lead to exposure to untrusted and malicious apps. Uh, synchronizing local data, you know, you don't know whether you're interacting with other untrusted or uh, insecure, insecure systems. Okay, we have another polling question here, so let's go ahead and uh, this polling question is who should decide which devices are allowed to be used by employees, the board of directors, the employee, senior management, or the IT department? So we'll go ahead and we will launch this question. And we've got about 91 percent of voted. We'll leave the poll open for another uh, another 20 seconds or so. So the choices here: are the board of directors, the employee, senior management, the IT department. And we'll go ahead and we will close the poll and share the results. Okay. And obviously, the employee should not be uh, deciding which devices are allowed to be used. So that uh, was pretty u unanimous. Only 3% said that the employee should. 16% said the board of directors. And then it was very close between senior management and the IT department. And uh, uh, based on what, uh, what research I've done and, and what I've found, that it really should be uh, senior management in, in conjunction with the IT department. They should have some sort of policy that's in place. So, you know, I would say that senior management, the board of directors definitely needs to be involved in the process, but they're not going to be the ones deciding which devices are going to be allowed. It's really going to be uh, uh, line management that's going to take that on. So let's go ahead and hide that poll, hide those results, and we'll move on to the next question. Okay, the policy. This is a critical area that most organizations have not, uh, not spent a great deal of time. Uh, should the policy be voluntary or should it be mandatory? Uh, whether that the BYOD program is vol voluntary or mandatory, uh, sometimes you'll see a combination of the two. Uh, it's going to be driven to some extent by the type of uh, business and data that the organization is deal with, as well as the positions that are going to be eligible for the program, uh, the nature of the employee's work, cost considerations, uh, uh, the BYOD policy and related documents uh, must address this issue in terms of uh, whether it's voluntary or mandatory. As far as the scope, uh, a closely related topic is, uh, you know, the program's applicability to categories of employees. Should this be all employees that are included? Uh, what about non-exempt employees or temporary employees? Uh, does the program address how to approve and track hours worked by non-exempt employees? Uh, this issue should be uh, addressed in, uh, in the policy or in companion policies. As far as uh, supported devices, the BYOD program, uh, 
should specify the devices supported in any limitations, e.g. prohibiting uh, an employee to jailbreak a smartphone. That means uh, basically removing some of the restrictions that uh, the employer has put on it. Uh, the minimum system requirements and configuration should be addressed in this area. As far as security, uh, individuals take fewer steps to secure mobile devices than do businesses. So the business really needs to have a policy in place. And uh, it, you know, there's been such advances in this technology. So, you know, like the new iPhone has a fingerprint scanner. But security risks are never going to be eliminated entirely. Uh, accordingly, you know, the employer should consider deploying mobile device management tools to improve security, including requirements such as uh, having the users register their device with the mobile device management tool as a condition of access, uh, use strong passwords on the device, of course, encryption for all data sent outside the corporate firewall, uh, block access to blacklisted sites or applications. Uh, there are ways to do this. Uh, and enable remote wiping to the extent permitted by law. And this, of course, is in the case where the employee has either lost the device or is no longer under, uh, under your employee. There should be a way to uh, have remobile, uh, remote wiping to clean that phone off. And this is, you know, this is similar to uh, what you can do with an iPhone right now in terms of if you lose that iPhone, if you've got it set up for Find My iPhone, you should be able to uh, either find the phone where it's located. You can also lock the phone. Uh, you can also, uh, you know, make it inaccessible to, to others. Uh, and then consent, consent to employer access. Uh, this is a condition of enrollment in a BYOD program, and there should be affirmative consent. And of course, this does go to a privacy issue, so you really need to look at your organization. You need to look at what types of data uh, is being accessed and, uh, and take it from there. Okay, so these are at a minimum. The policy, of course, is the starting point, but the policy should articulate the company's rights with respect to monitoring. It should address the employee's, ob employee's obligations. And there should be specific language in there about what are approved and non-approved uh, business usage. Uh, so there's an example there. A company might allow the use of personal devices for emailing, but prohibit their use for recording meetings. Uh, this, of course, would be critical for for internal auditors. Uh, you know, uh, putting a bringing up a recording of a, uh, during a meeting uh, can sometimes cause consternation among the. Uh, the clients that you're dealing with. There should be reasonable restrictions and there should be advising users that they may be required to disclose passwords to websites and applications that they may have set up on their phone and restrict the use of company data to legitimate company purposes. So these are all uh, parts of the BYOD policy. Of course, from a control standpoint, uh, these controls should be in place as a minimum. Protection of sensitive data and intellectual property, uh, protection of networks, making sure that the networks to which the BYOD devices connect uh, are secured and that require password and, uh, and proper login. Uh, responsibility and accountability for the device and the information contained on it. Uh, and removal of the organization's data from employee-owned devices upon termination of employment or if the device is lost, and then, of course, malware protection. So these things should all be controls that uh, are standard at a minimum within uh, uh, the BYOD program. Let's do that. Okay. As far as BYOD audit issues, uh, we have risk assessment. Uh, we have uh, risk assessment. Your BYOD environment should be subject to routine risk assessment processes, both initially and ongoing. And this is in particular when the BYOD environment has significantly changed. So this is like anything else. It's not something that's static within your organization. So uh, this is a constant process of assessing the risk of uh, BYOD. 
As far as the policies, the policies governing BYOD should be well defined, documented, approved by management, implemented, and maintained. Employees should be required to sign an agreement before their device is activated, and awareness training should occur regularly. Of course, this is the case of if the employer is providing the BYOD device. If the employee is allowed to bring their own device, obviously it's already been activated, but you need to have some policies in place. Legal issues, BYOD procedures should be evaluated to ensure compliance with legal requirements and minimize the organization's exposure to legal actions. The technical and user support, there should be a help desk or some sort of support function to assist users' technical issues because there are going to be some users that are less uh, technically savvy than others. Uh, governance, the BYOD program should have management oversight and monitoring to ensure the controls are operating effectively and as management intends them to operate. Training, BYOD users should be required to maintain basic security controls for the device, including device access restrictions, access controls, explicit explicit permission to wipe data, encryption, and malware protection. These should all be standard. Uh, as far as device secure, as far as uh, connectivity security, ensure that only authenticated BYOD users can connect to organizations network. There should be a way of identifying the device connecting to the network. Make sure that it is uh, uh, a sanctioned device. And then, of course, device management. The organization should use an automated mobile device management software tool to manage all BYOD devices and access to the software. Should be restricted to just authorized BYOD administrators. So these are audit issues that need to be considered uh, as part of, part of the audit plan. Here we see a great matrix from Missouri Communications highlighting the issue for different platforms of mobile devices. You can see here is bring your own device, choose your own device. Don't bring your own device where business owns the device. Here's the different uh, stakeholders in that, the board members, finance and uh, procurement, HR and legal, uh, IT and operations. And you can see the pros and the cons for each one of these. I think this matrix really lays out uh, very well what the, you know, depending on what your strategy is and, you know, the stakeholders and, and what, uh, what the issues are that you're going to have to deal with. So based on growth projection, projections for BYOD and its potential risk, uh, internal auditors should get involved in assessing their organization's BYOD risk and evaluating mobile device management and other policy solutions to determine their adequacy to protect the organization's proprietary and sensitive information. Moreover, internal audit should ensure that the organization's BYOD practices comply with privacy and data security requirements and close uh, imposed by industry standards, laws, and regulations. So here's uh, some of the things that uh, you know uh, we've identified from uh, our survey as being best practices, and this is a good starting point uh, as far as what audits role should be in BYOD. Here's another slide that shows uh, the threats and how internal audit should address them. We have uh, uh, risk of uh, information loss. Uh, monitoring, awareness, and communication, and treat, treating uh, these devices as any other endpoint within the organization, and what internal audit of focus should be on these, reviewing the malware, firewall policy, of course, reviewing policies is a standard uh, internal audit uh, uh, task, reviewing the operating system and up application update policies, making sure that everything is current, ensuring that the contents of the devices are encrypted and secured. This may be uh, something that an, your IT department would, uh, would take that task to do. Uh, ensure the Bluetooth feature is in non-discoverable mode or disabling it altogether if it's not needed. And then verify awareness on protection against unauthorized observation of sensitive information in public places. And this really refers to Wi-Fi and public networks. You know, it's very easy to connect your phone to a Wi-Fi uh, uh, when you're in an airport or on the train or anything like that. But, you know, sometimes you'll, you'll be connecting to... Uh, networks that might not be secure and they might be, you know, somebody might be running that network that has uh, ulterior motives and they may be 
using it to gain access to your mobile device. So you really need to be careful. Uh, what I do when I travel now is I take along my own mobile hotspot, which has a uh, unique username and, and password, and I use that for uh, for doing my uh, Wi-Fi when I'm traveling rather than connecting to mobile devices in an airport or any other public location. So here we have some uh, sample audit objectives and the way that you know we find these audit objectives is uh, we typically will go out and look at audit reports that are out there on the internet and these are mainly uh, you know from government agencies where they have to uh, show their audit reports and show them to the public. So these are some sample audit objectives that were pulled from uh, one of the audit reports, provide management with an assessment of BYOD policies, procedures, and their operating effectiveness, identify internal control and regular, regulatory deficiencies that could affect the organization, and identify information security control concerns that could affect the reliability, accuracy, and security of the enterprise data due to weaknesses in mobile computing control. So these are just some sample audit objectives, and I'm sure if you go out there now and you just look uh, BYOD or uh, bring your own device audit reports, you'll find a number of audit reports that have been issued. You'll find uh, you know varying degrees of uh, sample audit objectives, and you can take those audit objectives and uh, start to craft your own audit in this area. So now we have another polling question. Let me bring that up. Okay, and this polling question, this is our last polling question of the day. Okay. What is audit's role, the auditor's role in BYOD? Evaluate compliance with the policy, assess the risk, assess the ability to provide multi-layered security, or all of the above. Remember, if you have any questions, feel free to, uh, to post those questions. Uh, we will be providing you with some, uh, some tools after the webinar. We'll uh, also have the link to the recording that will be made available to you. Uh, but we also have some audit programs that uh, that we will be sharing, so uh, you know, look for those in your email. Okay, we've got uh, almost 90 percent have voted. We'll leave it open for another uh, another minute or so. Okay, 91%. And we'll go ahead and we will close the poll and share the results. And the majority said all of the above, which is the correct answer. Uh, internal auditors should evaluate all of these things that should be part of their audit plan. So let's go ahead and we will close that. Okay, here we have some uh, resources and tools that are available through, uh, through AuditNet. Uh, there is a mobile device checklist, uh, and we do have, uh, that's from SANS, S-A-N-S dot org, and the, there should be a, uh, uh, a URL there, but apparently it's not showing up. Uh, we will, let's see if I can, I can send that to everybody. Let's see, it is sans.org forward slash score forward slash checklist forward slash mobile M O B I L E mobile hyphen device hyphen checklist dot xls. So it's an Excel file. It's a great, great tool to have. Uh, you should all have that now. Also security guidance for critical areas of mobile computing. 
It's a download from the Cloud Security Alliance. And then, of course, there's the guidelines for managing the security of mobile devices in the enterprise. This is from NIST. NIST has a lot of great information on uh, mobile devices and, and BYOD. So that's uh, something that you might want to take a look at as well. Okay, let's see here. And we're always adding new resources to AuditNet, so you know it's important to to come back and and check on. Uh, on what's available. Now, uh, we also have some templates that are available in AuditNet. There's a bring your own device uh, template that we added in July, bring your own device assurance audit program that we added in July. There's a maturity assessment that was uh, put in in uh, June of 2014. There's a security document, security of mobile devices. And then, of course, there's a, uh, from Fast IT Tools, is BYOD Security Audit Program. So these are all available as templates within, uh, within AuditNet. So if you're, if you're a, uh, if you're a teammate user, an ACL user, uh, Caseware Idea, uh, or Knowledge Leader, uh, you should have access to these through, uh, through the enterprise site license that we have with those organizations, also the uh, Association of Healthcare Internal Auditors, and recently SAP. Uh, SAP has been added to that uh, list of uh, organizations that has access to all of these. If you don't uh, belong to one of those uh, or subscribe to one of those services or have the, the software and you don't have access to AuditNet, just send an email to jkaplan at auditnet.org and uh, I'll send you uh, one of the uh, one of the spreadsheets, one of the templates that we have here. So here's some contact information for uh, for me for AuditNet. Uh, Jim Kaplan, J Kaplan at auditnet.org, or you can reach us at auditnet.org. You can reach us at auditnet.com or auditnet.net. They will all go to auditnet.org. You can also reach us on uh, on your mobile devices, we have apps for the iPhone, the iPad, uh, the uh, Android devices, uh, as well as all the Windows uh, tablets and, and mobile devices. So these are all available. And I hope that this provided some uh, additional information, uh, you know, in terms, of, in terms of what the issues are and what the risks are. Uh, Okay, we've got a question here from uh, from Daniel. It seems naive that we can expect our users to tur turn off Bluetooth and only connect to secured networks. Can you comment a little further on your perspective? Well, I think this is you know this is really an organizational policy that uh, you know you need to look at in terms of uh, what are you opening up uh, your uh, organization to by allowing uh, this. Uh, Allowing Bluetooth or uh, connecting to unsecured unsecured networks, and by unsecured networks, I'm really talking more about uh, Wi-Fi in terms of uh, you know when you're in a public uh, public location. So that you know is I think most of your IT audit your IT departments will say that you know connecting in that sort of environment uh, is is risky. It, it definitely is risky, and so you know if you're dealing with a company-owned device, they can you know provide certain guidelines as to uh, how you can use that device and and where you can use that device. Of course, you know you can't control everything and you can't control it all the time, but I think uh, you know I would go back to the old adage that uh, you know on uh, network security or internet security is an oxymoron. There is no such thing as absolute security and you need to take uh, whatever reasonable steps you can to protect yourself so that uh, I think it would probably be unreasonable to tell your employees that they can only connect to secured networks because they are going to go out there and they're going to connect on secured networks but there should be some security backup in place uh, so I think that you know that's something that uh, that needs to be discussed. Okay, we have another question here. Should the focus be on implementing controls or education? We can't control everyone. <clears throat> 
I think that uh, education is going to be the first, uh, first order of business. Uh, obviously, if you have a policy, then you know, the policy should be uh, communicated to everybody, and you should be able to uh, start getting people to think in terms of what they're doing with that device and how they're using it. So I think that that is uh, the first level. Uh, controls, uh, that's going to rely to a certain extent on your, on your IT and, and your management in terms of what controls they're going to put in place. Obviously, the internal auditors are not going to determine the tr controls, but they are going to go in there and they are going to audit to make sure that uh, there are controls in place. So the specific controls that we outlined in this document, as well as other ones that seem to be evolving as the technology is, uh, is advancing, I think are things that, uh, that you want to look at. So that's basically, uh, you know, I think this is a, that's such a new area, and it was clear that, you know, uh, based on the survey that uh, auditors were not, uh, were not really uh, up to date in looking at this. And it's not unusual, you know, when you're talking about things like uh, social media, you're talking about cloud computing, all of these are new areas and auditors tend to uh, sort of hang back and try to get an understanding of the technology before they have the, the expertise and the knowledge to go out and, uh, and audit it. But I think that this is, uh, this is one area where it's about time. I, I think that uh, you know, BYOD is here to stay. Everybody uh, has mobile devices, and the devices seem to be getting smaller. You can now get uh, you know, all the technology and all the computing power in a, uh, in a wristwatch that uh, was on unthinkable uh, just, you know, 10 years ago. So I think that you need to think about what kind of risk your organization is being exposed to. Do you have the policies in place? Uh, are there controls to mitigate any risk? Uh, as I said before, you're not going to eliminate all the risk, but what you want to do is minimize, uh, minimize those risks and minimize the loss and uh, the exposure. So I think that those are the kinds of things that uh, you need to look at. So with that, if there are no more questions, uh, I want to thank everybody for participating today. Uh, ooh, we've got a couple more questions that have come in. Do you know any specific case that will prove that BYOD is a risk that cannot be mitigated? Uh, you know, I think that uh, there, have been, uh, uh, there have been a number of cases that have come up. And I think that, uh, you know, I can provide you with specifics on those. But, uh, you know, from mobile devices, there, there have been breaches. And those things are, you know, something that, uh, you know, that are just illustrating the fact that this is something that's going gonna, it's gonna to be more prevalent as we, as we go forward. Okay, what can audit do when management has a policy but decides not to monitor or enforce it? Uh, again, this is a management issue. Uh, you know, it's the same. It's the same as any other thing that uh, that you're dealing with. If if there is a policy in place, uh, you want to look at the policy and make sure that the policy is reasonable and it's enforceable. If uh, if management chooses not to enforce the policy, and uh, you know that would be a that would be a, an observation that you would want to make. You can't force them. You can only recommend. But number one, sometimes policies are put into place that are not enforceable or not reasonable. And you know, as an internal auditor, I think it's uh, your obligation to point out uh, maybe the, the shortcomings or the failures of the policy. Uh, but if you've got a policy in place that you feel is a, uh, is a sound policy, I think that you want to point out the fact that uh, uh, management has opted not to not to look at this policy and not to enforce this policy, and therefore they uh, they are accepting the risk that if something should uh, should occur that uh, is in contradiction to the policy that they will be uh, uh, they will be responsible. So if there's no other questions, we're at about 1:56. I want to thank you for for taking the time to join us today and. Uh, 
you know, this, uh, this is, I think it's a, a very important area, and I think it's something that internal auditors need to look closer at. Uh, we will be doing a follow-up on the, uh, the BYOD survey to see what kind of changes are taking place, and we're also looking for any additional resources that anybody has. We're always out there searching the Internet as, as well as uh, contacting our network of professionals to add resources on this particular area. I think that this is an area that, uh, that is critical. Now, we do have another webinar coming up uh, December 3rd, and that one is on using keyword analytics for unstructured data. And that one we had a survey of over, with over 600 responses. And for those that took the survey, if any of you took that survey, uh, you should have gotten an invitation to that webinar. Uh, but uh, for those of you that have joined us today, if you send me an email, I will get you an invitation to that webinar and we'll get you in. Uh, doing that with Rich Lanza, we have developed uh, a list of keywords, and this is similar to uh, a project that was undertaken by both the ACFE as well as uh, one of the big four accounting firms that came up with a list of keywords used for fraud detection as well as for uh, uh, for for a Foreign Corrupt Practices Act. So we have a uh, we have a list that we're going to be distributing with that webinar. It's two hours of CPE, and because you joined us today, uh, just uh, say that you were at the BYOD webinar. You'd like an invitation to the uh, to the other webinar uh, on keyword analytics, and I'll get that out to you. Uh, Rich Lanza and uh, his associates have developed some tools. Uh, that we'll be distributing, and uh, this is something that will be an ongoing project. We will be doing more surveys in this area. We'll also be discussing the results of that survey. So we're at 2 o'clock right now, so I want to thank you all for joining us today and uh, wish you all a good day. Thanks. Bye-bye.